Alright, hello and welcome back guys. Time for game two of the finals for the North American Challenger Cup Grand Finals. Yomi, game one. High five came out big early on with a lot of aggression, but Yomi was able to wrestle control the game back and find a victory in the first game. Now, Yomi this time round, actually, uh, they're going to be the ones on the opposite side, the blue side this time. And once again, we're going to see some aggression coming out from the boys at high five, looking for a potential pick in the jungle. They're not going to find it this time, though. Uh, maybe they'll swing back again for more aggression like they did the last game. We started off very well for them. Yeah, Grishank, once again, does have the Rage of the Gods online and available. So the potential to steal away those buffs is definitely there. It's up against Gilly once again. He has Fenrir this time. A little bit better off as far as wave clearing lane is concerned. He's not going to be punished as hard necessarily because he'll have the AoE wave clear with Unchained. But he, it's still not an ideal situation as a uh, warrior in lane to not have that mana buff, especially since the gods don't pick up that bluestone pendant anymore. Now it appears what High Five seems to like to do is go hog two on that jungler and start mid camps because you can hog them immediately if you want to mm -hmm. and secure them is in a half a heartbeat. Like one hit on each plus hog two, kill them both. Why? Because hog two hits two creeps, not just one, like we get with hog one. So they're gonna go for the start here. Will they go for the actual hog? They're gonna save actually and potentially look for the steal on the blue. But the thing is, the blue they know is being done right now because the speed buff is still there with a double wall coverage. Oh, they're gonna look for the bait right here. They could look for a pick on to unrelinquish very quickly catch. to 2v3 and they know this is here risky. going in anyway risky risky well held by unrelinquish on that whirlpool and it's high five with the ones in trouble there the reset happens gilly takes a bit of poke but the brute lies onto el chapu puts him in a whole world of hurt now grishank trying to support but he needs to watch how he gets unrelinquish el chapu should go down here to a brute lies momentarily but the support is on its way from yomi again as grishank is still can't blink from that yankee he's only level one though he's gonna bravely run through the towers what what is this game El Chapu lived. Grishank lived. How? It's called the Running Man. Everybody is very slow. Nobody had boots, so nobody could catch. Actually, I'm surprised that we didn't actually see my theory catch on to El Chapu, but he did manage to live under the tower at level one. The speed buff stands, yeah. and everybody goes back to farm. I expected like double kill them, two kills easily. Yeah. Uh, El Chapu was just able to skirt away, the Razor Rope was applied, El Chapu had potions ticking away already, and that was just enough to barely allow him to sneak back out safely to that lane. A Feather Step over a minion, I believe, ended up helping out a little bit there as well. But it's going to be Yummy resetting things back in the jungle, they're going to pick up their speed buff, high five. Surprisingly, coming out of that one ahead as far as goal is concerned for the moment. They're, they're okay for the time being. They've got the jungle camps to clear still. The big play for me then, honestly, was Unrelinquished being very smart with his Whirlpool and mm -hmm. holding it. It felt like he held it until he realized the aggression was coming. And then the moment he saw there was good aggression, he immediately dropped the Whirlpool, hitting them both with it, and zoned them out from going aggressive, which is what Al and Grishang were looking for. I expect him to do that because they were looking for Gilly again this time around. They were trying to pick on Gilly or Mytheria and keep the pressure on him. It was actually surprising as well because they knew those wards were placed down there. Materia had watched them be dropped. You see wards now for the first second they're placed down, so it's like, oh, yeah, okay, there is in fact a ward sitting there. There's three men on that ward. They went for the invade anyway. Unexpected. They went for it. Oh, somehow survived. Still a mystery how that ended up working out. Right side, back and forth going on. El Chapu and Gilly fighting and slapping each other around. Those health bars are getting real low real quick. They have to be careful. The one benefit for Gilly, though, is he does have sustain. He's got two health potions, two mana potions. He's already popped one, and he is Fenrir as well, don't forget. So if he does put a point to see how which he hasn't got just yet, he will start to sustain a little bit more than what El Chapu can. But he's being respectful right now. His level five has been hit by El Chapu. Left side, though, aggression. Yep, looking for the fight. Nantan's going to go down first blood, getting the kill onto Met Yankee. Vesalius wasn't really able to do a lot in that engagement. So that'll be a kill over there for those guys. Vesalius is going to pick up what he can from this minion wave. In the jungle, back harpy is being picked up by Yomi. Right lane. Like you said, that ultimate is online already for El Chapu, so Gilly really can't look to leap on foe with that Unchained. He'll get pulled straight out of that one. It means no stun coming out. And El Chapu will have the potential advantage if he's going in anyway. Didn't find the gravity search. Yep, didn't find the gravity search. And is he going to be able to get away, though, is the question. Will leap for the time being back to the safety. As finally, my theory does hit level 5. Going to meet so back up, played by Elbow Chacho in the jungle. Go back to farming once again. This is the only issue with the mid camp starting when they do now at the beginning is that we don't have the general fight at three minutes or the six minute mark mm -hmm. because the journey already on cooldown by them. They've been done yeah. at different times. It's a little bit more delayed, but by that point in the game, ultimates are online, the fights get a lot more risky. And a lot of times it just seems like, well, we really don't want to fight you right now, so I see you're going right side camps. We'll just take left side, split the difference, and we'll come back later and hope for the best. 
Uh, right lane in that engagement though, one thing to note, Beads was forced on Elch Poom, similar to how we saw last game. Beads, much longer cooldown than the, the Ragnarok early on, so Gilly's gonna have that all in potential once again in just about a minute when that Unchained, or Ragnarok rather, is back off cooldown. Yeah, just keep an eye on that, because you might actually see Bastet come and rotate over there looking for the pick as well. You can see this more from junglers camping the solo lane a little bit more this meta, just because Gold Fury is not as difficult to lose. Like, if you lose the Gold Fury, it's not going to be as brutal as it once was, now that it scales with time. Left Harpies, though, they're going to go to high five. Yep, they're in position to pick those up, and we'll do so in short order. They're starting to build a little bit of a gold lead, just over 1,000 gold right now. First Blood definitely helping out with that. He's going to rotate over and look potentially for some steals in the Yomi side of the jungle, but everything already has been cleaned up. Oh, rotation uh, left, though. Rotation left for Brochacho. Nanta going to go in aggressive. They're really looking for the pick on to Hoi, who's trying to start his step the flick, but he's not going to get away from it. Vesalius is going to go down here. He uses no escape. Tell Whip connects, and it's Jimny Glick who gets the kill. Yep, nice stuff. Over in that solo lane, that's what we were talking about, that Ragnarok. Missed it on camera, unfortunately, but Ragnarok into an El Chapu, a Wheelish with no beads, is not going to end well, especially when you're pulled back under the enemy tower. They're looking potentially for kills here in the jungle, defending Olympus, unrelinquished, Whirlpool, oh. called Jiminy. Jiminy's in a lot of trouble, he's gonna get dunked into a Kraken as he stood still to rewind, he was already there, Brochacho though, lurking in the wars with Nonton in support, relinquished in a lot of trouble here, Nonton's gonna land those in hands though, and the poison will connect to bring him down, there's the splash onto Yankee, and Grishank with the Eagles rally, followed by the Petrify, will get Nonton a double kill, and potential for the gold. They, uh, I guess not. Uh, change mind. Change mind. Nonton just like thinking about uh, it, walking around there, looking at it, no, no strafe penalty, why not look at it the whole way through, making the casters hopeful. But alas, they'll go back to lane, not going to risk it. There's a couple guys nearby, Vesalius had returned. They still had Bastet and Gilead rotated over, so it's a safer call, unfortunately, for us. Just go for it, guys. We want to see you guys get horribly defeated because it was a bad situation to start the Gold Fury. We don't care. We want to see a bloodbath. Picking an itemization because it's always interesting after a patch to see what people have mixed things up once again. No hogs again for the supports this time around. Devour's gone for the whole year up against Nonton's um, Medusa, who's gone for that transcendence. It kind of makes sense because you're going to take a lot of poke in that lane from the acid spray. But well, rotation from Gilly right hand side with the support of my theory, they might be able to get something on Al Chapu, but not when Suka's about. Yep, going to lay that back on the Mathira. Bead's just coming back offline, or online rather as well. El Chapu will have that option if Gilly looks for that Ragnarok. Won't have it the second time around again. This could be a hero. Right. Gonna pull him out of that out of the leap with the gravity surge. Buy himself some time, but Ragnarok's still available. There it goes. Beads for Yeah, but Beads used once again. That's on cooldown. Feather stab. But Brutalize is now online. Has to use Suku and jump to it for the safety. El Chapu has no sustain. Rotation is coming from high five though. Grishank and Elbro Chacho are here. And Gilly doesn't know this, but he's being baited right now. Yep, he may have caught Vision yeah, coming over. They have to know now the fact that the rotation's coming over. Mithiri in a bit of a bad spot. Going to immediately leap in and back off once again. Grisham. Mid lane, we did see Kronos have to use the rewind to stay alive as the Kraken did come out once again from Onrenoin Quish. And they also forced the ult out from Athena too as Matt Yankee was looking for the play to pick up Jiminy. Not going to find it this time though. Yep, mana buff on the backside for high five, still sitting there for the time being. Mathira making a rotation over to the mid lane. Left side harpies are about to respawn. High five picked those up left last time, but Yomi in position to pick them up this time around. They have an, at least an idea of the timer they're going to notice here in just a second as they do drop on back down. I'm going to pick those up, share the love un unrelinquished as well. As uh, once again, a bit of a lull in the action. Well, there's not really much up for either of these teams to go for right now. No, not for the moment. It's generally about farming through the early mid game nowadays and trying to get a potential pick or two just to give yourself a small lead more than anything else. Maybe you get a tower down if you're lucky. And that's kind of what it's all about in the early stages. Once again, though, I'm seeing Grishang pick up these boots in the general, these ninja tabby. Generally, when you see that of a lot of the belowners, you've seen warrior tabby, but he likes to go for the attack speed version and look for the extra in hand. So he's generally going to be not using the bludgeon or he's not mm -hmm. focused on the bludgeon damage, I guess, as much as going for the scourge or the shield bash. That's what it kind of feels feels like he's looking for, you know, the late game attack speed more than anything else. Yeah, he did pick up the, the bash as well, just for early game. It's a good extra bit of damage. But, like you said, those in-hand attacks, it's stack-based. Every, thir every third hit, you get healed. Every third stack, you get an extra stack of block if you're in the shield stance. It synergizes very well with attack speed. So a little less could also be, because it's going to be the attack speed I guess, but Jiminy gets caught by the Todd and the Kraken, but good Aegis blocks the Kraken damage, great re-engage from the Eagles, Relief from Grishank, keeps Jiminy alive, Mayak is still chasing the kill, as my theory's in a lot of trouble here on this Bastet, she's evaporated before Mayak can even get in there, on the backside of him, she's in a bit of trouble from Brochacho, but El Chapu has caught Mayak. 
Yep, automatic. We get hit by that charge. Probably pulled back in. Grishank will pick up that kill, turning immediately to focus on this gold fury. There's still three members of Yomi heading on over here, trying to stop this. It's gonna come down to Gilly no leaping in to start this one. No cracking, like you said. Sunbreaker though. Great great from Gilly though, gonna put the damage down, but there is the sun's firing down. Yomi get the gold fury, and they get themselves a kill. And now Nonton dies as well. Does El Chapu for the double, and Gilly gonna chase for Chacho for the triple, but I don't think he'll get it. It's the backside. Jiminy's here. Finds the time stop, time rip combo for the kill. Gonna rewind back out a little bit further away. Albert Chacha here to help zone out as well. Gonna lift some damage, possibly look for a kill. Gilly, deep behind enemy lines right now. They're looking to clean up as he latches back on with the Brutalize. Just short to find a kill. Unchained over the wall is good. Looking for the double Bro, now. Chacha's dead too. Yeah. Bro, Chacha's gonna die there as well to the end hands from Yomi. Great work from them overall. I don't think the rewind was good. I think Bro Chacha was trying to support his teammate and ended up dying as well, trying to support him as he didn't really have much else he could really do once he got in there. So, Yomi come out on top. They get the Gold Fury too, which is even more brutal. Yeah, I think Jiminy might have been expecting the rewind to take him a little bit back, further back in the jungle. It just was not far enough by the time it finished channeling. Yomi was right back on top of him, able to chase down and find those subsequent kills over there by the tier 2 tower in that left lane. Right side Harpies, Rage of the Gods used by Grishank to go ahead and secure those. As we're kind of back to a bit of a farm phase, but first Gold Fury, Yomi picked that one up. It's them, in, I don't want to say in control of the game, but them within a little bit of an early game lead, kind of turning the tables a little bit here on high five early on. Honestly, the game for me has all been about the two solo laners for the most yeah. part. Gilly game one got focused down, had a rough game on, uh, up against the Fenrir. This time around, he got the Fenrir himself, and he's doing work with it too from the solo lane. In a good position for himself, and it's where the backbone and the actual experience lead is right now for Yomi is in this solo lane. Yeah, looking at the composition coming out from Yomi as well. Can a Wheelish pull um, Ho Yi out of the dive bomb when he's hovering in the air? And what's it? Ho Yi. When he's hovering, waiting to use a dive bomb, actually. Oh, right wait a second. Right Torn, Kraken combo in mid lane. Jiminy, click. Say goodnight, sweet prince. Gonna evaporate in a second. Charge prey misses from Brochacho, and the cats are connected with the silver spoon. Little boy blue, but he's under the water. That'll clear them out. Yep, that's going to be a kill over there for those guys. Right side, Elchipu once again was forced to burn the beads against the Ragnarok. Actually looking for the kill. Gilly leaping forward. Not quite able to latch on this time around. Uh, left side, jungle. <laughs> Nonton missing a couple of those in-hands. The trading starts to go back and forth right now. Dive bomb aggressive. Looking for a Petrify. Going to find the slow. Defender Lib is forced over there to help him out. Yeah, it is, but now we're going to have two trapped by location. four in this pit, and it looks like we'll see Vesalius going to get surrounded. He will drop down, gets the suns off, though. But actually, no, he's still trading out well against Alchipu. Alchipu does survive, but it's a one for zero exchange. Up right lane, Gilly taking that opportunity to go ahead and push that tier one. He's probably going to be able to bring it down right here as another minion wave is about to arrive. Alchipu, a little worse for wear, just picking up some minion farm in that left lane right now, sharing a love with Namton. So yeah, I was going to have before. The gravity surge can pull people out of the air mid-leap. Does the dive bomb actually count as being in the air leaping when he's just hovering in the air before he actually looks to jump down? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm pretty certain he can probably be pulled out of that. Right, so be, I was, Potentially. I was, looking at, I was looking at the late game interactions coming out between the Fenrir and, and yeah. the Wheelish once they start. I'm, a, I'm actually not sure the whole Yi one because it was a different sort of ability than a leap yeah. originally, but now we've changed it to more of a leap. Like a delayed and her leap, basically, is what it is now. So, potentially, can be used. I'm not 100% certain on that. We'll find out if it gets used, though. Yeah. Well, For those who are tuning in right now, though, guys, this is Yomi versus High Five. The winners get to face off against Enemy for a chance at getting into the SPL. The losers will face off against Cognitive Gaming for a chance to get into the SPL. This is what they've been working on all season long to get this shot for themselves well at least they're split long to get this shot and they're going to find out soon who their opponent's going to be it's one zero at the moment to the boys of yomi i yep. believe the and they one. close it out with their own crack in his bro chacho and he's dead uh, barely surviving the razor whip not quite finding that last tick of damage he was looking for so he will survive gonna go back to base lick wow. his wounds heal up and look to regroup once again yomi Maybe potentially look this at the 4v5. Maybe. There's a taunt. 4v5, great taunt coming out. And there's an engagement on the backside from Gilly looking for the Ragnarok onto Nonton. Not going to find it though, as Nonton got a great petrifier for the whole team, which makes El Chapu get the kill of Vesalius. And now Gilly's surrounded by four members in a 4v5 fight. Nonton with that amazing petrify has just turned it. There's the gravity surge pulled in the back of a knockup with that moonlight charge. In a 4v5 counter engagement, high five come out victorious in that one with two kills in the books for themselves. And now they turn their attention to this mid lane tier one. Curse dropped down the pluck on Underlingish as well. Athena rise, but not in time to save him.
Not in time to save, man. Now Athena's going to be surrounded as well. The kitty cat is here trying to bleed. Don Tom will go down, as will Brochacho. The tower will stand. And again, over aggression, they didn't yeah. find what they were looking for. Yep, so they ended up paying for it after all. It's going to be a two for two exchange in the end, unfortunately, for those guys. Actually, Kako dropped down the link for Grishang. The cats are giving chase. That slow gets applied. Looking for it. Metheria finds the kill with the razor whip. Looking for a little bit more. Elchapu is out of mana right now. May not make it back to that tower. Over the wall, Suku saving the day. But what is my theory going to do here? He's waiting on the pounce to be available. Actually, going aggressive on Jiminy Cricket. So, Jiminy, I want to call him Jiminy Cricket. It's Jiminy yeah. Click. Yeah. I want to say Cricket every time. And immediately the rewind comes out. So, Jiminy backs away to find Pinocchio. Sylvanas, unfortunately, not in this particular game. So, no little you know, tree to carve him out of. He won't be joining us today, unfortunately. Gold Fury, however, while she may have respawned here back on the map, may not be here for very long. High five, though. Looking to contest this one to crack and drop down. The fight is on. It's high five deuce. High Gold five, Fury's get the Gold Fury! And now they're going to keep the aggression going. Rochacho with the weakening curse going to force the beads on Relinquish so he can get the cooldowns. But the feather step comes out from El Chipu. And now Gilly is trying to pick on the crocodile with the help of the kitty cat. And the kitty cat will find one. But the lady with Suku, she wants more. Yep, Defender Limbus dropping on in. Gilly looking to deliver that special delivery. Not quite going to find it. Nah, not in time. Not quite finding the stun. Now pawned it back on in. Gravity Surge pulls Gilly out oh. and away from that one. Trying to save Nanton, but Mathira finds another kill in that engagement. Rishank a little bit late to the party. He's now going to get surrounded by both Met Yankee and Gilly. Going to get forced to use the Weakening Curse and the Eagles. Sorry, the Eagles Rally, rather. Thanks to the Weakening Curse coming out there from Met Yankee. So, big fight going all around. High five stealing with Gold Fury, finding a couple kills. Not to say Yomini know, wasn't able to answer back in the end as well. But that Gold Fury was the big takeaway. Looking at that Golden Experience graph. Yomi had to lead for a little while, gold wise at least. High five has swung things back in their favor. This is why we're starting to see the rise of Sobek come back into competitive play as well, because I'm pretty sure it was Brochacho that just secured that with the lurk in the waters. The burst damage from that ability, very, very strong, and it's useful throughout the game. You can see the Fuddly Channel is currently at rank 2. It does 500 damage, so it's pretty good for trying to execute off these targets of the Gold Furies and Fire Giants. It's kind of interesting. You said the Lurking in the Waters, great burst of damage, secure, uh, secure objectives. Emir, Shards of Ice, same boat, Bacchus, the Intoxicate, kind of the Very lesser true. played guardians have all these objective control abilities. It's I think the mistake there really was on relinquish Kraken early. He Kraken yeah. too early. He didn't have as much damage as he thought he did with that Kraken. It's only re he only does 220 flat damage plus 30% scaling. So he didn't manage to execute it. He just it was just too early, which allowed Brochacho and the whole team had just used all their burst. Yeah, for sure. Uh, mid lane, a little bit of grouping, and Relinquish going to pick up a minion wave worth here. As uh, otherwise, now maybe a little bit of a misstep coming out for those guys. High five, definitely looking to fight themselves back in. Taunt mid lane, Grishank gets poked up, but it's Unrelinquished thrown back into the enemy lineup. Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble. Actually, going to try and find the Kraken, but Eagles rally saves Grishank from terror. Bro, Chacho does finally find that kill. Met Yankee surrounded, cat bleed out once again from my day, but Met Yankee will be another casualty of war. And now with Pounce used, I think the kid is in trouble, but support is here. Yep, Jimmy Glick rewinding successfully, so we'll save his life. Backline Gilly looking for it. Metheria in the front line of the screen. Gets brought down. Nanton finds Vesalius as well to kind of clean house up house as the Deicide gets cleaned up as Jimmy Glick finds one last Bye, kill to Gilly in the back line. Absolutely. Best. Look at him go for it. Only Grishank down at the moment. They should be able to bring this one down pretty handily. They've got the damage of Jiminy on this Kronos as well as Nonton. And don't forget El Chipu there as well. They have a lot of damage on this team. So this will drop relatively quickly and hopefully safely. Um, no, they no, they, all grouped, level they all grouped in the pools. Guys, guys, <laughs> guys. When oh, will guys. these teams? I you, love you, high five, but like that was that was messy. You, you don't you're not you don't learn how to fight the fire giants until you actually get to the SPL. That's like if fighting the fire giant without stepping in fire is uh, SPL level play. And is the challenge. But you but. Can, you you have to step in the fire for a second. But it's the fact that they groups all the fire around in a circle that they couldn't attack it anymore than the league guys. It was like oh guys, yeah. <laughs> oh guys. You don't learn these things till the SPL endo. Come on, this is the challenger cup. Challenger level plays. We see SPL stuff. We have to start questioning things going on because like. Whoa, you guys tanked the fire jump without standing in lava? <sighs> Crazy stuff. The, the, the SPL guys don't do that. Left up is go down, though, to Yomi. You can check in the Golden Experience League now. High five with the fire giant on four members. Grishank was still dead when it did get dropped, so he's not going to have that fire giant buff. But it's a 3,000 gold lead, 2,500 experience. Those sort of numbers generally are the side of a snowball. But in this game now, not as much snowball as you'd like. They're going to start sieging mid, though, looking for some tier 1 towers. 
Yeah, but the grouping is definitely going to start up right here. We'll see. Last time we saw this happen by high five. Didn't work out too well. Met Yankee fighting the taunt of the Nanton behind deep lines. Can they follow up? However, bees from Nanton going to avoid the grab from the Ragnarok. Oh, Ragnarok does pick up Grishang now after the Eagles really did great work. And it's going to be Vesalius who's going to be the first one to fall down. Albro Chacha will start regenerating a little bit more. Grishank can tag a couple of shots for his team, but he does not have a fire gen line. Watch out for Chacha with the charge prey. He'll be looking for a pick if he needs to as the rest of his team now regenerate. They've seen immediately backing up. They don't want to overcommit to a tier two tower defense. It's all about making sure they keep those Phoenixes up. If they ever commit to the tier two and lose more members of the team, that opens up the window of opportunity for, for High Five to actually take a Phoenix rather than just removing some towers from the map. 20 minutes in now and two towers down in the middle lane. The first two of this middle lane to drop. And now they're going to take the one on the left hand side too. Just extending the golden experience lead right now. They need to win this game high five. Otherwise they will have to face off against cognitive gaming. If they win this game though, they still have the shot of facing enemy. And it looks like both teams really want to face enemy. Oh, Gilly was looking for something immediately pulled out of the air. That's going to be a kill going to Nantan. Wheelish working out well so far in these team fights. Ruining many of the days of Gilly. He wants to leap in. Elves Proof keeps saying no. Really nice way for Notch Proof that on the pull. The Golf Fury is going to fall down to high five, so just extending their gold a little bit more. A little bit more valuable now that Golf Fury as the time goes on. But it's still only 20 minutes, so it's not reached its full form just yet. And now we'll see the siege for the tier two. And the question's going to be will Yummy look to defend this? It's a 4v5 again because Gilly was just brought down. Albert Chacho put himself on the front line, son. Yeah, you know what? I may miss you, but you still have to worry about the fact that I might potentially grab you with that charge prey and pull you back into my team. You might be able to dive bomb Avasalius, but you still don't want to be there to begin with. Same thing, Unrelinquish. You get pulled in, you have no escape. You drop the Kraken on yourself and hope for the best, but you're probably going to die anyway. A quick recall from High Five, then. They've taken down four towers. Still a gold fury away as well, and a purple buff for their pleasure. Quick return to base, buy some more items. You can see Spirit Rope finished alongside Runeforged Hammer on Grishank Spelona. Demonic Grip was finished by Jiminy Glick, and he's also working now towards that runner to Hootie by the looks of it to add to his flavor. And some crit now starting to come online for Nonton. Once that's complete, it's going to be a big spike of damage on the other side of things. Unreal Linkers still working on that Spear of the Magus. A little bit of flat pen online, but not quite that passive that's oh so important for shredding away those protections. Elsewhere on the board, crits start to come online as well for Nanton with that uh, short blade. Hidden blade. What the hell is that actually? Cut? Yep. Short sword. Does have crit. Keep an eye on Nonton. He's going to be the damage dealer now. You can see how far behind Ho he is right now. He's level 15. Yeah. Still not managed to finish off his execution here, which is going to cause him some issues, especially when he's going to be up, up against the crit in this next engagement. If Brochacho can find a pick, it'll cause issues. There's a gravity surge coming in in the back of that tail whip. It's going to be a kill going the way of high five in that situation. Once again, 4v5. And that's a big part of the Yummy frontline already removed from the table. Brochacho going forward. Eagles Rally is available if they want to go to initiate here. If they can make a rotation over here potentially. Uh, a phoenix is a phoenix, but with the fire giant buff now wearing off, they don't want to stick around and overcommit because they want to start getting vision control once again as right side of the jungle and prepare for the next fire giant. That gravity surge off a tail whip is not an easy ability no. to land. The, the timing of that has got to be accurate. It's a very small window that they're knocked up in the air, but it was really well played by Ultra Poo there. There's a good setup. I'd not really considered Sopex tail whip into the mix with the gravity surge before now and you can actually see it's actually working out that even if Elbro Chacho does miss the initial engage with the charge prey he can still get a follow-up and yeah. another pull absolutely it's a great combo coming out from that we don't really see a wheelish picked up too much it's kind of a rare situation like this when you have that set up on your own team as well as a couple of leaps on the enemy team is kind of a prerequisite because you don't want to just rely on the moonlight charge well it, it's a it works to set up the gravity surge. It's not the most reliable option. You want to have as many options available for it as possible. What is going to be the plan for High Five and Yomi now? High Five, they managed to take down all the tier two towers as we were talking, but the fire giants up and Yomi in position to defend it. Sentry wards are down, but the boys are High Five. They're on the way back. Got a couple of wards themselves, and it's going to be Yomi that are trying to hard rush this as quick as they can. This could be a misplay. They're doing a lot of damage. They've spent a lot already in this engagement just to burst it down as much as possible. High five are uh -oh. here. That could be a free fire giant, and they will secure that. Uh -oh. Yomi just gave it to them for free. Not free, but I don't know because it's now going to go down as well. And that is an F6 immediately. I can completely understand that. They used every ultimate in the engagement to try and burst the fire giant. 
didn't work out for them. And they were going to lose that fight because look at the ultimates that were still online there. Bro, Chacho had ultimate. So did Nonton. So did Al Chapu. That would have been a bad fight for them to carry on taking. The fight giant went to them and they would have lost that game immediately. I can understand the F6 there from Yomi. It was a misplay. And it was the only chance, though, in fairness, to try and do something. I felt they we were far behind, so I like the call. The call was good. It's just a shame it wasn't executed as well as they were hoping. Yeah, it definitely, uh, ideally, it would have gone the other way around. They would have gotten it and hopefully have taken the fight and gotten control of the game back in their own hands. Didn't work out that way, like you said. Game number three, guys, going to be coming up here in a moment. High five. We're able to even things back out and take the score to one to one. So it's all down to this one final last game. Who will face off against enemy esports? Winner of the next game, well, we'll find out who that's going to be here in just a few.